Okay, so as you can see, we've got our solar panels that are already on the roof. They've been here for a little while now. They're getting quite mucky. Um, but it's now time that we can actually wire them in downstairs into our electronics hub and charge our batteries. So in our last video we wired in all of the 12 volt hub with the main battery to the 12 volt distribution block but we didn't wire in anything for the solar charging and also the alternator charging from the Orion which is going to come later. So on our wiring diagram what we're going to do this time is we've got our panels on the roof and we're going to wire this part basically. So from the panels down to the MPPT charge controller into the links and into the batteries. So actually a lot of the setup is already done because here is our nice charge controller already mounted on there. This is our solar disconnect switch and these are the wires coming from the solar panels which are already on the roof. So actually the connection part should be pretty easy, should be a nice easy job for once. So the solar panels that we've already got on our roof are each 175 watts and the way that we decided on those sizes for each panel is by doing like an electricity audit. So we thought of every single thing we could possibly think of and then we plugged in we've got like a smart plug we already had which was handy very handy <laughs> so then we plugged that in and then we plugged our devices or components into that and then it allowed us to monitor how much energy it was using and here are some devices we have yeah so we've got a normal hairdryer which I won't be able to use in the van because the wattage is so high and we're only going to have a thousand watt inverter and this is 2000 or 1850 or something so if we plug that in and then we've got a little monitoring screen over here so as you can see that's 1800 watts of power which there's no way we'll be able to 1200 use that. on low speed <laughs> 1800 on high speed yeah so then i was thinking oh no what am i going to do to dry my hair um, a lot of people say, oh, you don't need one, you'll be fine, but for me, I prefer to have one. And I was looking around, I couldn't find anything, and then my mum found this one. She had, but she doesn't want anymore. Look at this thing, it's ridiculous. It's Ooh, so tiny! It looks like a toy hair dryer. <laughs> it's like a space gun or something. Pew, pew! Um, but anyway, I think this one is only like 600 or something, I can't remember actually. So let's plug this in, and we'll see. And it should actually work because my hair is so fine anyway, I only need to use it for like two minutes. So let's see. Let's see two. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that was a high speed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I think that should be fine. I have tried drawing my hair with this one time already and it works pretty well. Um, it's from Muji, I think, and I don't think you can get them anymore, so I'm quite lucky with that. <laughs> and then it'll break and you're just going around with wet hair for the next few months. <laughs> so then the next thing we were going to try is um, my iPad. So if we use this one, this is just a USB charger. I mean, obviously they're all going to differ slightly. I'll plug that in. So we're not going to be going through a three pin plug like this, but gives an idea of the power consumption anyway. So plug that one in. Got 11 watts. So then we've got a laptop, so that one is going up to about 70, 80, something like that. So just gives a broad example, but we did that with everything and that allowed us to choose the sizes of solar panels that we needed, so yeah. So we took all the numbers we got from the smart plug and all of the data we could find for the 12 volt appliances around the van of how much energy it uses and then we made a big spreadsheet. So that is this one here. You do like your spreadsheets. Yeah, but it's been really useful actually because we're trying to figure out how much uh, watts of power we need for our solar panels, panels for our use case and also for our batteries. So we've got all of the items here is stuff that is continuously running. So this is effectively stuff that's going to be hardwired into the van. So we've got like our lights, um, the fridge, max van, diesel heater, things like that. And then we've got how many of those things we've got. So pretty much everything, we've just got one of those, we've got a few pumps, um, but the lights, we've got eight of those. Um, and then we've got how many, um, how much power that thing actually uses. So for the lights, they're pretty low power, they're only about three watts each. 
and then we try to work out how long we're actually going to be running those things in a day. We try to think of the worst case scenario for all of this. So for the lights, we figured 16 hours a day would mean that if it's a absolutely a miserable day and we're sleeping for eight hours, we might in theory have the lights on literally every second that we're awake, which is again, probably unlikely, but for the worst case, if we do that, even though they're only three watts each, and we, if we have eight of them 16 hours a day, they actually come out as being the highest like energy consumption in the entire van, which is why it's red up here. It kind of goes down to the green, so it gets lower. So we've done that for everything. Um, and then we've got the things like the laptop and the hairdryer are plugged in through the inverter. So that's at 230 volts. Um, and for that, Abby's hairdryer, we factored in, she just got an allowance of two minutes per day to use the hairdryer, which she said is actually fine. She said uh, she uses, what was it, five minutes every three, days. every three days. So she's got actually more than enough from those two minutes, which is kind of crazy. Um, so that's all of that. And then we've also done it for the things that are not plugged in permanently, but things you charge. So this is stuff like the phones, um, iPad and things, which you basically charge up and want to charge, you take them off charge. And with this, uh, what we've done is we've tried to find as best as we can on the internet, all of the sizes of the batteries for those things. Um, got things like my, I've got an electric toothbrush, which is uh, fairly small. And then also how often we charge that thing. So for my toothbrush, the battery lasts forever and I only charge it once every 10 days or so. And then my phone allocated to maybe charge it every night, even though really it doesn't deplete to empty every day. That would allow us to charge it to full every day. And then we got down to things like our running watches. We've got two running watches, uh, running watch each. And those are really hard to use any power, hardly ever charge those things every five days or so. And then what we've done, we've taken all of those numbers from there and there and put it up in here. And this is the total power consumption of this kind of worst case snapshot that we have in the van. So we've got all of the 12 volt stuff comes out at 1327 watt hours per day and then the 230 volts. And then with the 230 volts, it also has to be plugged in via the inverter and inverters are never 100% efficient. Ours says it's about 90% efficient, some's lost in heat and things. Um, so factoring that in and then the single charge items gives us a total usage figure per day of about 1670 watt, uh, watt hours. So then we tried to work out just roughly if how many hours of sunshine we might have in a day and then what size solar array we would need to be able to power this load. And the sweet spot we worked out is around about three hours of sunlight a day. We would need about 558 uh, watts of uh, power on the roof. We've gone with 525, which is kind of the most we could fit in, but also again, because this is a worst case, hopefully that'll give us enough breathing space to be able to use most of these things. And if we do need to top it up at any point, because there's no sun or something like that, then uh, we can just hop in the car, because we'll have alternator charging car, the van. We can just drive the van <laughs> down the road, and we should also be able to charge that way as well. But trying to estimate how much sunlight there is is a little bit tricky too, because obviously it really varies depending on seasons and where you are. So we're looking at this sunshine map of Europe and we're down here in Devon. Um, and there's not too much sun, but then compared to some other places like up in Norway up here, there's you know often hardly any sun in comparison. Um, and then down in Spain and to Morocco, you've got loads of sun. And we're gonna be hopefully driving all around Europe. So it's a bit tricky, but we try to estimate around about three hours as kind of an average decent ballpark figure for how much sun we might be able to expect. One of the places we want to go is up the top of Norway in Tromsø, uh, where you get the northern lights and things up there. And in December and January, there's basically no sun at all. Um, there's literally, on average, zero hours of sunlight in Tromsø in December. <laughs> Solar powers, panels are useless in December up there. So yeah, in some places it'll be pointless that they're even on the roof. But in most places and most times of year, we should have enough power, hopefully, that we'll be able to power everything. And then we've sized our batteries at 200 amp hours, which um, based on our chart should mean that um, we can get hopefully, so a couple of days use out of it at least, because we've got um, 139 amp hours per day we're using. If we're using literally everything as it is in here in the worst case, which again is unlikely. So we're hoping that we'll be able to go off grid and because we'll have the panels charging up as well and the alternator charging, hopefully we'll run out of something else like water first and power won't be an issue, but we'll see. Yeah, Norway is actually one of the places that's at the top of our list to go to once we're on the van, isn't it? Yeah, that'd be a really cool place to go. In December there, at the top at least, there's no sun at all. The sun literally doesn't rise, but then in, I think it's June, they have the midnight sun where the sun doesn't set, which is pretty cool. And there's a marathon you can do, the midnight sun marathon, where you get to basically run through the night where it's still actually sunny. So. Yeah, quite like to do that, it'd be quite fun.
It's pretty cool, isn't it? Would be cool. Got to get the van finished first, so <laughs> <laughs> lots to do. Cool, so now all that technical stuff is out of the way, let's actually get some cables in, get everything wired up. Yeah, let's actually generate some power. They've been on the roof for months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> Going to need to clean them, aren't we? Hopefully they still work. Yeah, we'll see. That'd be pretty disappointing, wouldn't it, if you plug them in and nothing happened? It would really, yes. So obviously just because we can't turn our solar panels off, we're just going to cover them with cardboard just for safety reasons. <laughs> Very manual off switch. <laughs> now we can use our exciting tool. <laughs> there we go. That's a lot easier. Yay! <laughs> there we go. Does it work? We've got some kind of felt. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's not what I thought that would look like. Put some heat shrink on this one also, just because they're both black, just to identify which one is actually the positive. Okay, now hopefully that'll fit in the right way up, just into here like that. And just tighten it down. Looks like I'm doing this the wrong way around. It goes from negative, kind of crisscrosses. Yes. Look at the wiring diagram. One to two, and then one and two are here. I was saying to Tim, it looks like something you'd find in some kind of nuclear war bunker or something. <laughs> like really old. It's not very attractive. Abby thinks it's pretty ugly, but it's functional. <laughs> so now we've got those in. Screwdrivers fall on the floor. Should just be able to pull these down. And then I'll position this properly. Okay, there we go. Right, so that goes on there like that. And then, the reason we got this switch, even though it does look a bit ugly, like I've said, is because this one is a specially designed as a solar breaker, and it has um, a three millisecond cutoff type. And what it does is it has a kind of ratchet, so even though I can turn it slowly, it waits to engage a spring, and then cuts the power to both of the cables at the same time. Um, and that's kind of required by, I think, probably most of the electric codes in most countries. Pretty sure in the US and the UK. One of the reasons why the DC switches are a little bit chunkier and heavy duty than like an AC switch is because it's actually harder to turn off DC electricity. Because AC is constantly cycling between, uh, to, through zero volts, it's self-extinguishing. or Effectively, if you flick a switch, it shuts down straight away. Whereas with the DC side, as you're opening it, the current's always flowing in the same direction. And if you open the switch slowly, uh, then you can get the current arcing, which basically means it's jumping between the contacts as it's opening, kind of like a drawbridge opening. And then you can create sparks and burn out switches that aren't rated for it, which is why DC switches usually have to be more heavy duty and industrial to handle it, even with the same amount of current. So for example, that's one of the reasons why for our light switches we're going to be putting in later, um, instead of using a household light switch, we've got kind of DC rocker switches. If it's low power, you can get away with it, but for high power stuff like this, definitely want an actual DC switch. This is the last wire we've got to make. So it's good, we're getting a bit tired. A bit of a workout doing this one. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm going to use this heavy duty crimp tool and a vise for these ones. Nice solid connection there. And that is the last one. We just put some ferrules on the end here just to make it a bit tidier, otherwise it would just be the strands that we'd be having to put up in this little section here. So this is what it looks like when it's been crimped, and then here is one before it's been crimped on the end of a wire. Little tube. 
and then we use these handy feral crimpers to be able to do that. We've got all these tools that are like a very niche person who literally We're only using it thing. like a few times and then we don't need it anymore. So I just undo that one and it just slots up inside that little slot there and then just tighten it down. One thing that's a little bit annoying is the battery side is on the left yeah. and the panel's on the right. Oh well. Got a bit of crisscross going on. Never mind. So there we <laughs> go. So then we'll plug that one up on the Lynx distributor in a second. I think this is your favourite bit, right? Yeah, it heats me up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Getting flashbacks to when we were doing the um, fixing the outside of the van, using the heat gun to warm up our socks. Yeah, that wasn't good. It's actually quite mild today, it's quite nice. It's lovely. Quite cloudy though, so I'm not sure how much power we're going to generate when we actually turn on these panels. So this device here, the MPBT, this is the main brains of the solar setup really. This one's just a switch and everything else is just literally the panels and the cables. We've connected the panels in series on the roof, so 375 watt panels. By being connected in series, uh, what that basically means is that the current will stay the same, so it should be around 10 amps in optimal conditions. And that's fairly low for the solar panel, which means we can get away with using these cables on the roof. And it's quite a simple setup up there. It's literally just positive to negative, positive to negative each panel, and back down through these wires. And ultimately it just comes out as one positive and one negative wire from the whole array. Um, but it means the voltage is higher. So depending on the weather conditions, it could be anywhere from 60 to 70 volts, maybe even a little bit more. And what this does is it basically takes that varying power output generated from the solar panels, and it converts it into a constant steady form that it can use that can then charge the batteries and these numbers here the 100 is basically the maximum voltage this can take so as long as the array is putting in less than 100 volts it's fine and we'll be well under that and that is the charging current so yeah this all this basically doing is taking this varying power coming through here and making it nice and usable for our battery so they can charge there's just four sockets we just plug in the panels on one side and the batteries on the other what we're going to do first is plug in the battery side and then actually turn it on and configure it because you do need to change the settings of this depending on what type of battery you've got we've got lithium phosphate settings and they're slightly different charge parameters yeah we just got to do the negative one first because it actually sits underneath this so yeah do that one first and then we can put that one on the top up there with the 60 amp fuse on there. So this is our ground wire which is connected to a stud on the side and that's just coming up here to the Lynx distributor. Okay, so time to see if our connection to this works so we can configure it. Here we go. Abby's turn to turn the big red switch <laughs> and make something happen. Ooh. We have lights. Flashy well, they flashy. flash at least. <laughs> Says bulk, whatever that means. <laughs> right then, let's see. Aha, there we are. Update. Continue. Mm -hmm. You're in. There's some presets for different types of batteries. So it comes set default on gel, and we've that got one, lithium life. batteries. So we'll just check exactly, we've got the specs from our battery, uh, which has all the different information you need to put in. So we'll um, just check it's all correct and get it set up. Okay, so that's it. I think we're all finished with setting up all the settings for the battery that we've got. So are we ready to take the cardboard off, I think? Are we ready to test? And then try. <laughs> Good job you remember to take the cardboard off the roof. I think I would have forgotten about that bit. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been a bit of an anticlimax, wouldn't it? Might be good if we actually connected the wires for this as well. Probably would, would be a good thing. So, off, off, in you go. Okay. Okay, that's it. It's time to actually turn it on and see if it works. Are you ready, Abby? I'm ready. You get the duty of, or the, the fun of turning on this one. <laughs> okay, here we go. Batteries right. first. 
So battery on, charge controller is on, it's in the app. All right. right. We are currently not generating any power. So, here we go. Are we ready? Which way? Let's see. Does anything happen? We got <laughs> one watt of power. <laughs> Look at that. Nine, eight, nine. <laughs> eight watts. How much are we supposed to be getting? <laughs> it is very cloudy today, and they're incredibly dirty. Well, we're getting something. We are officially on solar power. It's the first of her many rituals of having to come up and actually clean our solar panels, isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to get used to this. It may be free power, but there is still some work you have to do. <laughs> this is slightly ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Desperate measures. Anything? <laughs> uh, not really. I think you just need to wait for the sun to come out. So the sun has just come out, so we're going to move the van back and drive it into this little sunny spot just behind me here. And uh, hopefully we'll get some more power coming out. Come on, sunshine. Sun is shining, let's see what we're getting now. You can see the sun in your face, that's a good sign. <laughs> 83! 83 watts, look at that. Yay! Nice. Look, we've got a whole one and a half amps. Ooh! Well, at least we know it's working now. <laughs> we probably didn't try the best conditions yesterday, did we? No. It's almost the solstice, so lowest, <laughs> low sun anyway. Winter, yep. it was dark, cloudy. Well, at least the sun shone today for us. Lovely. So that pretty much wraps it up for this one. We are now generating power from the sun. Woohoo! <laughs> and it's come out perfectly to test it as well, which is great. <laughs> so catch us next time. We're going to start wiring up our 12 volt lights in the ceiling. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, 101. Oh, luxury. <laughs>